Guys, I'm coming on the road. I would love to see you. We've been having a blast. Just go to SalVolcanoComedy.com for all tickets. Uh, I'm at the Ryman in March 11th. I uh, The next day, I am at the Tivoli Theater in Chattanooga. Then we got all sorts of fun stuff. We got Louisville. We got Evansville. We got Tulsa and OKC. Oklahoma, you've been asking me to come there. I am on the way. Get those right away. Um, the Beacon Theater, my hometown. I've been banging that drum a lot, but this will be my first headline ever. That's May 14th. And then, of course, I have San Diego and LA, May 21st and 22nd. Love to see you guys. Please come on out. Folks, March 10th through the 12th, I will be in Philadelphia, PA at the Punchline Comedy Club. I think it's three shows, maybe four, maybe five. I think it's five. I think it's five shows. You got to come out to one of them. Then on April 14th, I'm going to be in Irvine, California at the Irvine Improv. One show only, 8 p.m. that night. Then I'm heading right down to San Diego from there to do a bunch of shows. I'm going to be in Austin, Texas, May 20th and 21st, doing four shows at the Creek and Cave. Come out to see all these things. And also, if you're in New York City, come to Joey Rose's. If you're interested in stand-up and comedy shows, go to joederosainfo.com for tickets and information. If you're interested in coming to the bar and sandwich shop I've opened, go to joeyrosesnyc.com for info and hours and everything else. And there's a new secret sandwich called the Disgusting Pig. I swear. Yes. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds. Man. Hey, taste buddies. Welcome to the Taste Buds podcast slash YouTube show. <laughs> <laughs> Because it is more you than... You never called it that before, but also you said it half-heartedly. And at the end of you saying it, I was like, I didn't know if you believed it or not. Or you were just like, I don't know if it is. I always feel weird when I go and I say to somebody, we have a podcast that's on YouTube. I'm yeah. like, I should say I it's a YouTube, a YouTube show. A YouTube show. It's a, right? That's a thing, right? We have a YouTube show. Technically, we have we our have own YouTube. TV I just network. noticed your shirt. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm supporting. Yeah. I'm supporting. I'm That's supporting. my new merch. Yeah. yeah. I love it, dude. This shirt, by the way. Nice. Soft. Worn. Like soft. An old, like an old band tee, right? Worn. Yeah. Yeah. Large. Yeah. The fit. You're cooking with butter. The large and the other design. Remember, it was like a goddamn corset on me. Are you talking about the... Uh, you talking about the... The, 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 the octopus cracking? Yeah. You got to go, maybe go up a size there. That's a little note for all of you ordering the uh, merch. Go up a size. <laughs> This is also the God Bless hoodie. These will all be on for sale. They're not already because this comes out in a couple weeks. This is probably up online already. Yeah. If it's not, I don't know what to tell you, but it'll be up soon. That's exciting. Yeah. That's exciting. We were working on Joey Rose's merch last night. Oh, sweet, babe. Yeah. Oh, I would love some. Well, the one I'm excited about is we're going to have a shirt that says, <laughs> it's just going to say, our spokesperson isn't in prison, Joey Rose. <laughs> Because of the implication that it sounds like a mafioso type place? No, because Jared from Subway is in prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if I make that connection. Because I wanted I put, to. You're, 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 I mean, you're a social club and, and standalone <laughs> New York City custom sandwich shop. I don't put you against Subway. It's about it's about the sandwiches. You I wanted. Our, our, <laughs> I wanted to say this is what I wanted it to say. Wait, I wanted to our say, spokesperson. You maybe you say our spokesperson is not imprisoned for child pornography. <laughs> That's a better T-shirt. <laughs> the guy, the guy designed our merch kept saying that. He kept going. No, it's got to be our spokesperson <laughs> isn't a pedophile. And. And me and Paul are going, we can't have that on a T-shirt. That's insane. But uh, but our spokesperson isn't in prison. Our spokesperson is yeah. not in prison for questionable choices. <laughs> 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 you put this down here. It looks like uh, we, we decided to Shout do outs, a, a, yeah. a hello. Shout out to Wyoming Whiskey. Great yeah. people over there. A lot of involvement with the bar here. We're at Joey Rose's, by the way. Cheers. <laughs> It's a strong bourbon, but it's good. It's so good. It's delicious. I just normally don't drink bourbon straight. Oh, yeah, I got you. Per se, and not to... Uh, <sighs> not, you know... That was a big shot you just did, too. I only so did I thought you poured it for me to consume it as a one-to-one. -one. I didn't I didn't know if I judged Maybe it. Maybe that's why. Joe, this is our first time back since your opening day, last time we recorded yes, here. Yes, yes. We've now been open for a few months. And we're back to talking about pedophilia. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That, that is true. That almost blew a gasket. That Remember is that, true. That was opening night. You were like, yeah, yeah. I can't talk, joke about children coming here from the school. 
<laughs> yeah, there was a lot for the fans. There's a lot. There's a lot of bonus features cut out of that podcast that you did not you, see because well, I was stressing. It might be coming up in the no press doc. We don't know. <sighs> I was stressing that day, dude. We were we were we were recording up into the second we opened that night. Yeah, you feel, you seem now like. A world away, like you're you're yeah. a seasoned vet now. It's 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 a lot goes by in a few months. Yeah. Shout look. out to the gentleman who sent us this, along with yes. all the art, other artwork he sent. This is one of my favorite things of all time, as far as taste buds go, and as far as taste buds artwork go. And I've had a huge response from this of for friends and family. He asked if we would v, wear thanks this. For, thanks for getting that done, V. He asked if we would. Thank you, V. He asked <laughs> you if he asked me if we would wear this on a T-shirt. I said yes, I would. I just didn't want him to have to make merch because we're getting merch done already. I would love to make that a t-shirt and even give him something for doing it for us, but I'm not sure if we could sell we could sell that. I without, don't think we're allowed without getting without getting in trouble. I mean, we but took I mean, off the Snapple labels just to drink them all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. But uh but I would love to have it. Oh, by the way, we we forgot to do the opening chant. <laughs> Welcome to T A S T E Buds. Um yeah, we're back in the Rose Room at <laughs> At Joey Rose's 174 Rivington Street, come visit us. Uh, we're, it's Monday, so we're not open on Monday, so we're back here recording all day. We're in the Rose Room. We're doing a bunch of episodes today, right? We're coming to you live from the Rose Room. Yeah. Joey Rose. Yeah. 174 R- Rivington. That's, that's uh, 174.0 on your FM dial. <laughs> <laughs> you tuned into the smooth sounds of Joey Rose's at Rivington. You should, did you ever do that for a living? What? Did you ever do any DJing? No. For a living, not for. I mean, like some a lot of guys like have, radio stuff. A lot yeah, of guys moonlighted on radio. Like, I, like a lot of a, guys here and there picked up stuff. You, you know? can name twenty people, twenty friends, twenty people. I will come dead last in the category of ranking diction. Really? Yeah, I don't think. I, and even for voiceovers and stuff, I've all you got like Jay and and Soder. They mm. have such good radio voices, and you do too. You really do. Soder's I'm a sloppy. Is, yeah. I, I sound like I have marbles in my mouth. Like sometimes my accent's heavy. Sometimes it's not. I, 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 Soder's I born it. for it. He's born for it. Yeah, his regular voice. Maybe he's and born. Then he can maybe do he's voice. born for it. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> Is that Maybelline? Yeah. <laughs> I did a joke for a little while where it's like maybe. Wait, she's what born was? With it. What was that? It was like eyelash and makeup. No, and no, 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 no. Not what was Maybelline. <laughs> what was that Maybelline. slogan you just did? Why don't you be true? What? What is, I don't remember that slogan that you just sang. It's Maybelline's only slogan. No, the first line, though. Maybe, maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Really? <laughs> That's it. I used to do a joke like, maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Hey, Maybelline, maybe she's just fucking born with it. Yeah. Like, enough. <laughs> like, it's not, like, don't take credit. Like, you're not fucking, like, let the girl be a natural beauty. Yeah. She's like, maybe I'm born beautiful. And they're like, well, maybe it's us. Yeah. <laughs> it is a shitty thing to say. You're right. <laughs> Like, you look gorgeous. Is that you? No, it's the fucking company. Yeah, it can't be you. That's the makeup, right? right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. that's a shitty thing Maybe to I'll say. start that up again. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll start that up again. It, it, it's de- it definitely works now in this very, you know, when we're all progressively moving toward the same things. Yes, I agree. True, true. Yeah, yeah it is yeah. true. It is true. Today's battle, by the I, way. I don't think that they can get away with that right now, if that's if that's that right now. I think everyone no, will be up couldn't. in arms. You couldn't. You couldn't do it'd that. Have to be, they'd have to ads, just make the slogan, slogan, maybe she's born with it. Ads are nuts. Like, if you go look at past ads. I do it all the time. Yeah. You go, uh, go on YouTube and put in, like, 1980s or 1990s yeah. commercials, and I'll watch, like, a four-hour supercut. Yeah. <coughs> I spend my time wisely. I had a I had a joke. I, I had a joke about if you looked up old whiskey, whiskey and bourbon ads and stuff from the 50s, because they were literally, like... It'd literally be like a wife. It'd be like, hey, fellas, you ever get tired of her running her fucking mouth? Why don't you drink some of this? It'll tune her out for a few hours. Like, the ads literally were like, when your wife is getting on your nerves, drink some Johnny Walker. It's really and- funny. It's funny because, like, for many people, that still is exactly what it's for. But you can't say that. No. You can't no. market it to those people, but that's no. why they drink it. Yeah, no. It's it's wild. That Not those- their wife, but to escape problems and shut That was a big, that was another big thing, like, that would, like, it, marketing in the 50s and 60s, it was more the 50s, but it was geared towards the wives for, like, you know, if you want your ha- husband to be happy when oh, he comes yeah. home and you greet him, you should be wearing this. Yeah, yeah. You remember it's those rules crazy. that they, they had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wild. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's, like, so just, like, you know, like, but t- talking about times changing, 10 years later, they, people were like, no way, right? Yeah. 
like 10, you know, you look at 55 to 65. <laughs> yeah. So and those like companies, no according to this timeline, those companies should be canceled for doing that. <laughs> there's not, there's no, there's no evolution allowed. There's no, no gross allowed. No. Yeah. I'm a believer in ev evolution. Yeah. Oh. Me too. I'm a huge believer in evolution. You it's evolution, let, baby. Yeah. That's my favorite Pearl Jam song. Yeah. You got to let people grow. <laughs> I mean, that's what we are. Yeah. Who, We've evolved. I mean, we're not, we almost we're not coming from that. We're not tadpoles anymore. If you said who we are, that would have been another Pearl Jam title. Yes. No, who you who you are, right? Who Isn't are we? Who, who are we? Are. Who we are? Yeah. You're talking about yield? No, no code. It's on no code when yeah. they went a little goofy. No code, then yield, right? Yeah. I, I yield, I stopped. And let me tell you something. This is nothing against Pearl Jam because, man, oh, man, for like from 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 uh, 10 <coughs> through yield, I I mean, I, I would listen to that on repeat all day long. Everything it was my college years. It was like, and then I don't know what, what I happened. Think I think I just got, it was just too much of it. And 10's like, an extraordinary album. <laughs> I think they, versus you, you're, they're peaking on verses Vitalogy. into into Vitalogy. Yeah, yeah. No, no code. code was a slight drop, and then Yield was a slight drop. I felt no code was interesting. Yeah. Yield is not a good album, but contains two of the greatest Pearl Jam songs ever: "Do the Evolution" and "Brain of Jay." The first song on that sure, record sure. is in, is insane. <laughs> no code was a really cool. If you remember the album put together really cool, it was like all those pictures and had those inserts that you pull out that yeah. look like I think they look like Polaroids. postcards. Remember? Postcards, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No. I thought that was that's got some good stuff. That's got hail hail on it. Yeah, and that's got um, red mosquito, and that's got yeah. You know, there's some good songs on that album. Yeah, but um, but yeah, it's a departure. As they yeah, say. but you're talking about ten verses and even Vitology, but most likely front to back is like, are you kidding me? Some ten, of the best rock songs. It's of funny. All time. Ten, I recognize as a great record. I can never listen to it anymore because it's it's it became like that first Rage Against the Machine record where it's. <laughs> I heard, heard it so much. many times, and then also too, it's it so polished compared yeah. to the following two. Yeah. I like when Rage got a little like dirty with yeah. the sound. Yeah. Then you go back to that first one, and it's so fucking polished. And that's yeah, the same thing with Pearl Jam. By the time they had, the Rage was at the what, the Los Angeles one, Battle of Los Angeles. That album is awesome. After that one, I was Renegades like, of Funk. Yeah, yeah, that's all the covers. Renegades of Funk is okay. <laughs> um, you know what? Let me blow your balls off. Okay. Um, when we were born, like what we consider right now classic rock, has been considered classic rock. Since maybe the 90s or even the 80s. Like, it was classic rock nearly immediately. Right. Like, 70s rock is, like, classic rock. Yeah, it was already rock. called classic rock. Then we transitioned to, like, yeah. glam rock yeah. and metal and things like that. When we were born, I was born in the, in the 70s, and in the, even go to the 90s, you're referencing classic rock, which is 20 years old. Pearl Jam, that album right now, is over 30 years old. It was 30 years old, about. Mm -hmm. So, in... in in that definition of classic rock, this is beyond even... It's a decade beyond what we were calling classic rock when we were that far removed from the actual 70s Well, if rock. you turn on a classic rock station now, you'll hear stuff from the 90s on it. Like it's been absorbed no, in. No, they've changed what it means. It just so means just more rock things. of a certain age. That's all classic yeah, rock but, means. Yeah, but then what are they... Then how do you define what classic rock used to mean? I, I mean, I think they just... I mean, I'm going to throw, think, on, you're I, gonna, I'm gonna throw on a classic rock station and hear like a three doors down. Well, I think you... I, I might be talking out of my ass, but I don't think I am. I think like you would hear some early... Not, see, it's tough with some of the stuff because grunge is such a specific genre. There's usually a station just for grunge. Yeah. But then there's other stuff from that era that I think you would hear. Yeah. Like there's Pearl Jam stuff that they would throw in on like the, on, like, the Dylan station. You know what I mean, or whatever, because it's it harkens or, or Neil Young style station because it, it's it's there's a connective tissue okay. there, you know, and then but there's also nothing connected old. to now. What is rock now, for real? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you either. Spoon's the Are only there even rock stations. Spoon is the only yeah, but like I consider Spoon on like an alternative rock band. I did too. They're like but kind like, of they're pretty in mainstream. Their own thing. I guess Foo Fighters, which yeah, they're a great rock band, but they're like one of a kind. You want to hear something crazy? This this <laughs> fucked me up when I sorry I keep saying the F's, but. This this messed me up when I thought of it. Foo Fighters have been around three times as long as Nirvana at this point. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, that's more established for Dave and Grohl than kind Nirvana. Of, and they're still relevant. Did you see the new movie? No. I mean, I saw the trailer, but I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, so you know what I'm talking about? I'll probably about? see it for my podcast. You know we what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I, was, I saw that, yeah. that unexpectedly 
There's a, a horror movie starring the Foo Fighters yeah. coming out, which is so genius. It's like the throwback to all those yeah. old band movies. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, great. Man, it looks, I so, love looks, it. looks funny. Yeah, Jeff Garland's in the trailer, and it cracks me up because he's so Jeff Garland all the time. Yeah, and we, he can see it in the trailer. He goes, he goes, Foo Fighters! Like, <laughs> he yelled it so loud. <laughs> it just makes me. Laugh. But you want you want to talk classic rock? It's saying classic rock is all the music made from the '60s through the '90s. See, wow, yeah, yeah but that's that's weird because then you have subsections of that rock, you know. Well, I think it was you more of, like it was a formatting thing that radio stations. Yeah, but you want to hear Power something crazy? Of the '80s. <laughs> Can I tell you the song I keep listening to the last three days? Please, because the album that defined my generation. The Reset album, I, I got to experience two of them, so did you, in rock music, mm -hmm. Appetite for Destruction, mm -hmm. and Nevermind. Those were the two Reset albums that we got to, where that where everybody was like, this just changed everything. Changed the game. Yeah. So Appetite, to me, is like... You think Appetite? I, I would say you're probably right. I mean, people, we were obsessed Appetite, with Roses it. Guns N' Roses was the biggest of those bands, and that was the biggest of their... And they also did it better than anybody. They didn't... Yeah. There was no glamminess to it. Like, it was... They were awesome. No, they had some glam. Well, later... But Appetite was like as ACDC as any of those bands ever got. You know what I mean? Okay. I think, but, I think Axel was in leather, black leather pants. But he didn't have the, like, on the, the jungle video he yeah, does. Yeah, but they yeah. didn't have makeup on and all. You know what I mean? Yeah, they yeah, looked, yeah. They looked like, like dirty dudes. Yeah, yeah. Poison was like, it was the same. It was like a little, nah, they, they were still considered the same. But yeah, it was, there was a division there. But I didn't know this till two days ago. Guns N' Roses has a new song out. This thing flew so under the radio, radar. No. It's called Hard School. It's it's a jam, dude. It's Axel Slash it's and Duff. It's a bop, as the kids say. Yeah, it's Axel Slash and Duff, dude. Yeah. It's the heart. It's the original trio. No, and dude, it is awesome. Really, and it sounds like Guns and Roses. It sounds like this would have came out right after Appetite for Destruction. Whoa, it's like anthemic. It's it's awesome. I can't stop is listening it just to a it. Single? It's just a single. Wow. And is it getting radio play? You know, I don't listen no, to terrestrial like that's radio. What I, I didn't even know it existed until two days ago. It came out in September. How did we not hear about the new Guns N' Roses with most of the original lineup song coming out? You know, that's crazy to I me. I think this is how we feel, but it's just because, like, the, I mean, the, people don't know. Oh, we know Guns N' Roses. You guys like Guns N' Roses? Do you know them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know all the I know songs? them from, you know movies, all the, you know from all the hits? movie soundtracks. But that's it. That's, that's my but point. But you know the reference. hits? You know from... I, mean, I don't know them by name. You know, Welcome to the Jungle. Yes. Paradise City. Mm -hmm. Sweet Child of Mine, obviously. So you know those. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I have an original pressing of Appetite for Destruction on vinyl, and it's like, I'm going to spin that when I get home tonight. That record is like, there's not a bad song on it. Yeah. It is a classic. You go through not, that, I know them all. That's like a thriller to me, <laughs> where it's like front to back. What's on, you can't what's mess on? with it. Mr. Brownstone's on that. My Michelle. It's so easy. It's so easy. It's Night so Train. Night Train. Oh, my God. Um, my, uh, You said my Michelle. Uh, cra you're crazy. You're fucking crazy. Sweet Child of Mine. Sweet Child of Mine. Uh, Paradise City is like. Paradise City. Rocket Queen. Rocket Queen, I think, is. How's that one go? Uh, that, do, that. Do, 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 What's the chorus? <laughs> Here I am, your oh, rocket queen. queen. Yeah. yeah. For me, that was the weakest song on the album. I love that song. Think About You is another one. Mm. I think about you. Yeah. Ba -da 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 -da. You sound a little like uh, ACDC there. He does. Yeah, he, he does. sounds kind of yeah. like Brian Johnson. So I saw them um, in uh, the, at the Staples Center, I think. Yeah. And uh, it was when they were doing the tour a few years ago. And I was like, you know, like there was some press where like they were like, oh, Axel's like huffing around the stage and it's just not the same. It's a little bit weird. That was not the case, dude. I went, he killed. He did not stop moving. And I thought he was going to like cheap out on the notes. And he hit every note. Well, that's what I'm saying, dude. In this new song, he's doing the like, wow. Yeah. Like he's doing all that. I'm like Jesus, God, dude. It yeah. sounds it's it's an awesome song. I can't stop listening. Doesn't to it. it feel like so much more <laughs> style and nuance and like I don't know went into that type of music. Like it was such a thing. Like no one's no one's screaming epic. like that. It was epic. Yeah, epic tunes. Yeah, I don't think rock is a thing nowadays. I don't think there's like a rock station. Um, well, there's not really a lot of. <laughs> Is there it, even a it might have just turned into pop, honestly. Yeah, like pop is like an amalgamation I of everything, I guess. But I feel like the last phase of like new rock music, and it wasn't great, was like that phase of like, well, no, 
It was the Matchbox 20 phase. Yeah. Which sucked. That was like... But then after that, there was the phase where it was like Kings of Leon. Not that Matchbox yeah. 20 sucked, but I think Matchbox 20 was more like top 40. And it wasn't like... Well, I guess actually... Great Guns and Roses was too, I guess. Yeah, it's just shifting. Yeah, but like that that run of like Kings of Leon, I, I always call that like the festival rock because like yeah. they were the guys, sons of not, who were the Kings guys Mumford Kings. and Sons. Yeah. Like oh, uh, that, that started doing like the, the like that like indie folk. rock, indie That's rock, folk. folk I'm indie not rock. a big Mumford and Sons. Fan. I, I liked indie rock in like the in like the I'd, mid mid aughts. No, to, some of it's great. I'd love to know what what you think of Drake. You ever sit down and listen to Drake? <laughs> Knock, knock. Who's there? Hello. Hello, who? Hello, Fresh. Well, you got me. <laughs> Hello, Fresh is uh, America's number one meal kit. If you listen to the Taste Buds, you know all about it. And uh, we'll tell you again because we love it. I, I actually cooked with Hello, Fresh this week. I made I made bolognese pasta. Oh yeah, yeah. How'd yeah. It go? It was it was good. It was really That's good. Great. Yeah, That's great. it was easy. I made it for two. I cooked it for two. Okay. This one Ate took both. Me- <laughs> Cooked it for two, ate both. With, with Hello Fresh, you get farm. Yeah, Sal likes it. What Sal likes to do at his home in his private time is he'll cook a meal for two, and then uh, he wears a an outfit where it's a, half of it's a tuxedo, the other half is a ball gown, and he'll he'll turn back and forth as he eats from both plates. <laughs> That's so funny. With Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal uh, recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. It's why it's America's number one meal kit. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about it, right? Wholesome recipes for yeah. satisfying nutritious meals, right? I love it. Six recipes per week to choose from, including low calorie and carb conscious op- options. I like when they. When you have the options to pick things that go along with whatever diet it is you're pursuing. You can customize it, yeah. right? HelloFresh is also 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. That's huge. Because often, a lot of us go, I'm just going to go to the restaurant because I don't yeah. feel like dealing with this right now or I don't have the time. I love that it's cheaper than a restaurant and still restaurant quality. Also, you can save on average $65 or more per month. I'll tell you you order HelloFresh instead of grocery store shopping. Yes, of course, it's cheaper. But what I like too is you can tailor it. So you don't just have to choose from their uh, preset options. If you want more of a certain protein, you can choose more of a certain protein. Tailor it right to you. So it really is like... There's no barrier to like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. You make it how you want it. Yeah. Um, uh, go to HelloFresh.com slash TasteBuds16 and use the code TasteBuds16. And you've heard this before for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Wild. Okay. That's HelloFresh.com slash TasteBuds16 and use the code TasteBuds16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Uh, HelloFresh, America's, America's number, number one meal, meal kit. kit. We started selling merch. And we need a way to sell it. And um, and I also opened a new business, Joey Roses, where that's we are right. right now. And you have a lot of mail that has to go back and forth. Are you spending all your days running out and going to the post office? Well, we're about to launch merch now for the bar. Okay. And one of the things that is making it a less daunting uh, concept and something that I think is palatable and doable. 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 Love it. That's actually a great word. Doable. It's, yeah, doable. That is good. It, raw, it, anyway, it flows. Is ship station. Indubitably. Ship station is already trusted by over 100,000 e commerce sellers. Ship station will help you keep track of orders from any sales channel. Uh, it's easily the way to find the best shipping carrier with deeply discounted rates. And you can automate just about you do any not, shipping task with just a few clicks. You don't worry about shipping again. You do it uh, from where you are quickly, affordably, and painlessly. Um, online shopping shopping isn't going to slow down. No, it's the, that's it. Now we've we've kicked it into overdrive. Yeah, so, yeah. and I I, I got to say my my favorite, and I've said it before. My favorite thing about ShipStation is the fact that when you want to, a lot of times when you start these sort of online independent businesses. The hardest thing is the mail order aspect of it. Go, there is nothing worse than going to the post office. Much love to the post office. Shouts out to the post office. But blocka, it's blocka. a pain, mm-hmm. and it takes forever, and yeah. it will make you not pursue a business. Everyone venture. understands this. So ShipStation is here to let you do it easily, You can put affordably. All, all your orders, you can funnel them into one interface, so no matter what you're selling, so you manage every order, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, all on your own website. You save money compared to going to other carrier options. Also, you can do it from anywhere, even on your phone, which is nice. So save that sanity. 
and uh, know that you're getting the best rate. Ship more in less time with ShipStation. Use our offer code TASTEBUDS to get a, f- a 60-day free trial. 60 days. That's two months to you and me. Yeah. Two months free of a no-hassle, stress-free uh, shipping alternative. Just go to ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in Taste Buds. Ship station, make ship happen. I think Drake is a great... I know he's your god. I know he's everyone's god. He's a great... I think he's a very, very skilled rapper, and I think he's very good at what he does, but I, it's his music just isn't for me. I don't like that underwater, where the beats all sound like it's underwater. Even though I appreciate the sort of uniqueness of it, I find it boring. I just, I, I just came from, like, like, when you, like... When you got a new Public Enemy record, I don't want to be that guy now. That's going to sound like so old. But but but, but, <laughs> but before he does this, please before he does this, please get off our lawn. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, when you got a new Public Enemy record, or yeah. like a new like, NWA wanna, record, or when the Chronic learn. came yeah. out. But that's how they they that's how they. But feel. you you that's, put it on. Yay's the only one that's kind of still doing that sort of album. But like, you oh, put you that him by his new name. Yeah. Right. Am I, yeah. His legal name. Yeah. He changed it. Yeah, I don't you, know. But you, <laughs> dude, when you, I remember when I got the chronic, I got it for Christmas. And I, I remember putting that on at my buddy's house at a party, and we it were was like, an event. It, it was holy like, around, shit. Let's sit here and listen was, to every song, every lyric. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so big. Like, I remember when I got Doggy Style, it was like such a huge. I remember every Doggy Style I've ever got. Every song. <laughs> Every song connected. It was like this sound montage that just blasted at you from front to back. That's the, and but you listen. I, I, I feel don't like, like there's not a lot of that anymore. Well, I, I just you listen one to of, music all the time. He listens like all the new music weekly, right? All of it. Yeah. And you consume it like that, which is that. But I don't know if it's like now. It's like you're just like oh, new music like on here. But it used to be like who who got it, and then like go and like listen to it kind of almost together. Dude, you, know, you had to. Well, right. Kanye, I just bought one of his two hundred dollar music players. He's just sold his album for two hundred dollars a copy. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that a thing? Is that really happening? Yeah, Donda, Donda he's two? fighting with Apple. They pulled their two hundred million dollar deal with him. Oh, is that what I saw? Both headlines because yeah. he wanted to price point two hundred dollars. No, because he's not publishing to streaming services. You have to buy it like an NFT from him. Really, I bought one. Yeah. It's so well, funny. I mean, it's that's cool and all, but I think Wu did that the best. I mean, it was one two but, million dollar album. Yeah, Wu-Tang I mean, well, did. he already made two million. Oh, he made it already. Already. And, oh, but they, it was a $200 million deal? That they pulled, yanked from him for disrespecting them. Disrespecting them? He's fighting Apple. Wow. The, uh, but this is the thing, Pimp. It he's, was like... He's great. Yeah, it is, it is fun. It is fun to watch. Despite the fact, the Kanye doc? Yeah. The Ye doc? Yeah. yeah. I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. the fact that he's it, yeah. threatening friends of ours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On a daily basis. Fight Apple all you want. Leave our buddy alone. Um... <laughs> But uh, but no, dude. It's 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 like pimp. This was like a thing where it was like you had to like you it, when you went to get like a record like the Chronic that was anticipated, it, it would sell out. Lucky sometimes. you got a copy. Yeah, yeah, and you would have to wait. And then the other thing was, if you wanted something that wasn't like mainstream, like I was such a hip hop head, right? So like you have to go to special when like state. I wanted like to get like the third DOS FX album after they weren't big in the mainstream anymore. I would have to call record stores and be like, did you get the new DOS effects in? And because you, cause some stores wouldn't order it. If they were like, we don't sell a lot of hip hop, they, they wouldn't have it. It's, it was like a thing, dude. It, you had to really, and so when an album sucked, you were like, <laughs> mother <laughs> fucker. Yeah, yeah. Because it cost you like, you spent 16 bucks. It, in the it, 90s, yeah. 16 bucks was a lot more yeah, money. Yeah. And when it sucked, you were just like, you, uh, the, "What I went through to get this thing, I and know. it's terrible." It, it's also it's also <clears throat> cool to work for it a little bit. I oh, like yeah. that. I really like that. Like you're extending yourself, you're investing yourself, you're, you're making a call, you're taking a drive. You know, you're like, I don't know, you might be sold out. You're, you're like, I don't know. There's something in that. But my counter argument to this is that nowadays people live in the scene of their music through all the videos on YouTube and stuff. Like these little kids live the scene, right? They're obsessed with it all day long. I don't sure. know if that makes it. Yeah, it's just different. No, it, was, a... it was. It was. It was. It was. It was. Kids living the scene back then. It was just different. You know what I mean? There's a different way to appreciate it now. That's all. Like I think the love is still the love. It's just. Um, it's just you know you're always look when you're when you're in your forties you're gonna be like man I miss when it was like I every Friday I would get my new thing on my Apple whatever to, whatever it is there'll yeah, be some new way of doing it. You're gonna be like remember Lil Zan. I miss him. 
<laughs> Remember but, when Lil Zan's album dropped? I will say this. I will say this. Download the one thing. The one thing you guys don't have, which is and it's a shame, with rap music at least. When it in the nineties, it was like everybody had a different style, and every producer was so unique. So because you could sample still back then, so beats were like. It, the sky was the limit, dude. Like everybody's record sounded different because everybody's producer sampled different stuff. A lot of stuff, stuff. sounds the same today. So, I, but 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 so it's the the song. But then everybody else had a different style. So like in the nineties, it was like, what's this guy gonna sell? Like I remember when Cypress Hill came out, and we were like, mm. who is this guy that's rapping like a bird? This is <laughs> crazy. Like the, like. Yo, you, you, I could, that, that you, you know don't what? hear that anymore. Listen to Cypress Hill on the way home. But you know what they didn't? You know it's what they didn't have? Back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what they didn't have back then? Salsa windfall. Ah. New salsa windfall coming soon. <laughs> it's coming soon. Download I'm serious. It. Download it. Immediate download. It's coming soon. Drake, I Drake is hit or miss to me. Drake's been around now for t- fucking what twenty years almost. I mean, like fifteen yeah. years. He's been number one for the whole yeah, time. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's he's like one of the last big, you know, like last. Re- well, no, that's not true. But like of my, yeah. like you know, of a little bit before. But he it, it, he, he has some crazy like bangers for me and then someone's like eh it's not for me like when he gets too a little too and didn't he help like pass the baton to like the mumble wasn't he like the beginning of like the in your feelings kind of like he helped it but there was no stopping it yeah it yeah i mean right now hip hop is is like it's almost like emo punk it's yes. great yeah i love it yeah we, you know what we should do but it's like most of it outside of like a few outliers unless i'm Unless I'm completely just out of touch, but like, I mean, Kendrick is still like, you know, oh, he's the best, like this, yeah. like I, I like that. I like, you know what I mean? Something yeah, that's Kendrick. A little, sorry, Kendrick. You know, the, the, the production and there's there's influences of old music. You know what it. we need to do? You guys reacting to new music videos. Oh, that's as a dope. Video. I would do that for sure. Let's do that. That'd I would be do that fun. for sure. Yeah. I'll show you guys some weird shit. Yo, know, Weezy but I like, was like another one of the last yeah. like really like like amazing lyricists. Like right now, I don't feel like it's about lyrics right now. I do like the so Kendrick, Drake, yeah. Kendrick, Drake, and Kanye are three of the guys that are massively popular that also sound, you know them like when you hear them. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. that's that guy. A lot of the other guys, like it's like it's fair, but I agree, it's very emotional now. When that all started, the vulnerability in rap started with Biggie, Tupac, and Eminem. Like that's when it started. No other. Biggie was the first. That's the other thing. It's like when Biggie came out and he was like talking about how he wanted to kill himself. Like that was crazy. Yeah. The Ghetto Boys were the only guys that even graced that touched on that. Scarface would talk about depression. Houston's, but like, own. yeah, but like. That was crazy. It was crazy when Eminem came out and started talking about like how bad his life was. It was crazy when Tupac was like like soulfully like yeah. reflecting on his mother. And stuff. Like, is Eminem considered like to you guys like older now, or is he still so relevant that because he's just like he so? Just I mean, be a living legend to me. Yeah, he's definitely he's, older. he's a he's like just a walking like a go. Yeah, yeah, but he's not like as relevant right now as he was. Right? Isn't that nuts? He just did the Super Bowl. I mean, no, I know that, no, he's, a, but they, I mean, that was like a thing like, oh, we're getting everyone back together. It wasn't like a, like he sells ki- pretty heavy like still. Little yeah. kids, like my little sister will look at him like you looked at your parents' favorite music. Right. Oh, that's wild, right? Yeah. Fuck yeah, that is it's wild. So crazy. Also, it's wild that like people that grew up on him, like when they're old people are going to be singing his music as like, at like 75 years I, old. I can't wait for the face tattoo generation to get old. It's, I it's that we wait. never experienced anything like this. I love it. You know what I mean? I love Never it. experienced it. I was like working on a script about that actually. Uh, working on <laughs> working on it. Yeah, no, working on a show with the, the with the, the with our development team about this is the at least for us this is like the first time that we're gonna see people getting really old with gangster rap and tattooed faces and things yeah. like that and that's gonna be a fucking trip. Yeah, it is going to be a trip. Imagine my grandma, ninety now, sings like the Ink Spots. You know what I mean? She sings well, music from the forties. But here's and the 50s. thing, too. Everybody, when when, when we're ninety, we're going to be like you know, fucking <laughs> with a fat dick for that <laughs> mouth. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. But everybody also just gets their tattoos removed now. They're just like, whatever, I'll get them removed. Yeah, but let me. Tell I know you guys something. had a neck tattoo. Jamie Kilstein used to have neck tattoos. They're you would never even know he had them. Now they're yeah. just gone. By the way, gone. this, this like, you know, like yeah. so people I think are just like whatever. Oops. By the way, guys, the fans are exploding. We're running out of time. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Are they going nuts? <laughs> yeah, they're going nuts. What do we say right. we're doing? <laughs> Ham and cheese versus corned beef on rye. <sighs> Man. All right. We, all right. We, well, we, where are we in the app? Uh, like thirty. 
Oh, we started reminiscing. Yeah. And now we, got, we, have we, to, got, we have to get we into this. We got 20 this. minutes left before we get to start the next episode. Let's go. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. No matter what happens, I love you. No matter what happens, I love you. No matter what happens, I love you. Time to B A T T L E, buds. Okay. All right. Now, you have said time and time again to me, ham and cheese is your favorite sandwich. Ham and cheese is outside of peanut butter and jelly, especially if we're talking processed sliced meats. I think even maybe as much. I mean, I, I hold two sandwiches on a pedestal that I think they are the king of sandwiches. They are the Yankees. They are the they are everything. They are peanut butter and jelly and ham and cheese. Ham and cheese is the quintessential childhood sandwich, even more so than anything else. People might throw bologna at me. But I don't think so. I think it's ham and cheese. As a child, I was a finicky eater. And I discussed this on the PB&J battle versus grilled cheese, which I, I believe I lost. And I cannot believe it. I didn't think there was a sandwich that would beat peanut butter and jelly. But or grilled cheese would. Touché. Which it did. Touche. <laughs> I was a finicky eater. I only ate two sandwiches as a child. Peanut butter and jelly, ham and cheese, and bologna. But like ham and cheese was my all-star. And to this day... My two favorite sandwiches remain the same. All right. Well, I mean, I love a ham and cheese. There's, no, you, there's nothing. They, it's like what they did with peanut butter and jelly and ham and cheese was we discovered two tastes that elevate each other to the point where alone they're not the same and together they're better than the sum of their parts. Though they're they're better, they are the sum of their parts is better than alone. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you saying. understand. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, <laughs> And I like it. I like yeah, it with, with cheese, mayo. I like it with mustard. I like it on white bread. I like it on what wheat. kind of cheese? I like it you on say? rye. I like it toasted. I like it every which what way. What kind of cheese? Bud. I might get slack for this. I once argued with Paul Verzi and Giannis Papas over this. We are talking about best cheeses over a nice long text group group text. If you say Swiss, Swiss, I'm going to throw it. I swear to you, no. My second favorite cheese of all time is is uh, fresh mozzarella. But well, what my, it's okay. It's tied. It's tied. But my first cheese I is, fresh fake, is what they call the fake cheese, and I understand what they're saying. I don't know why I like it. Maybe it just goes back to my childhood. But dude, I I'm gonna get shit for this. But I love yellow American cheese. I love I American, love but I love white they say American. It's not even real cheese, which it's, it's not. Well, I it's, it's, it's not a brand. Right. Yeah, there's not like. But, but I love white American. Like, uh, if what? I eat a ham and cheese, it's white American or nothing. Okay, easy with the white American. Okay, But if yeah. I eat a corned beef on rye, which I'm yeah. arguing yeah. for, it's a Swiss. I understand Swiss. I like Swiss. But not with I ham. Like cheese. Some people love ham and Swiss. I think it's an idiotic combination. I can see it, but if I have a chance to get American or anything, a lot of people put cheddar on their burger. No way. American. American on. on the burger. American on the burger. American yellow. on the grilled cheese. Yellow American on the burger. Yeah. White American on the ham and cheese. No. White American on the grilled cheese. But That's saying, how I roll. How do you hate on a, on yellow American, which many people do, when it is in the biggest foods of all time, the ham and cheese? The cheeseburger, I can, the grilled cheese. I can tell you These why. These are powerhouses. I can tell you why. People hate on it. Because people don't know that American cheese, a lot of people don't know, that American cheese is a cheese you can actually get sliced at your deli. When you say Who to them- know that? Well, because I've had this argument. How do they think it comes? When I say to people I love American cheese on a sandwich, they go, that's disgusting. They're, they're, they're disgusted. And I go, I don't understand why you're so disgusted. They go, that shit in the fridge aisle. That, and I go- no, not Velveeta individually yeah. wrapped slices. Let's get something Go to your straight, deli people. and get it sliced. Let's get and, something and they don't straight, know. people. We're not yeah. talking craft singles. That's what they think you no, mean. No, we're not talking that. I'm talking... But I'll tell you what. Boom, slice it up. I'll tell you what. A craft single on a cheeseburger is actually pretty goddamn good. Because it melts in a really weird, yeah. uh, good consistency. But, I understand. So right after I said we're not talking craft, we were talking craft. So let me tell you, though, about the corned beef on rye yeah. and why I picked this. The last time a sandwich changed my life, uh, which happens... With, with the last time, which means I would love to hear every time. Well, I think as you're growing up, you try new sandwiches. Tell me about the first time. Tell me about the first and last time and a I sandwich also, changed your life. And I, after that, I'll tell you about when the, the, night, the night the DJ saved my life. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you guys know that? That's a jam, kids. Do you, remember when we were, do you remember when we were super... I like having young friends, but I, I always realize that I turn around and go, do you guys know that? Do you, do you guys know that one? That's why DJ saved my life? Do you remember, do you remember uh, when we were on vacation together, we were in the pool, and we were super drunk and stoned? I'll never forget it. And, and on the speaker last night, DJ played, my life was playing. I played that shit. And I, I, you, we were really tuned up, and I, I reeled you in with a long story. 
about getting into an altercation and then the DJ, this and that. And then I, I, I told it for like three oh, minutes. And then, and said, then at the end I go, that night a DJ <laughs> saved my life. And you yeah, were like, yeah. you <laughs> son of a bitch. I remember I was like, what happened next? <laughs> anyway, listen, when you're a kid, sandwiches reshape everything you, because it, you don't, you don't because you don't know what the possibilities yeah, your, are. Your flavor, your taste profiles are constantly changing. You're being introduced yes. to more and more tastes and, and things like that. And so, so you're discovering foods a lot for the first time. And exactly. Some of them, some of them really blow so, your balls off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you get a, bolo- for instance, you'll get a bologna and cheese with mustard. And then somebody will introduce you. I didn't you, do mustard till late in life. Somebody will introduce you to a bologna and cheese with some mayonnaise and some tomato. And you go, whoa, oh my God, that's so good. Or somebody will give you a ham and cheese. And then they'll say, have you ever tried, the, you know, Dijon, whatever. You, it keeps changing. You start mm. learning all the possibilities. You have lunch meat, roast beef for the first time. And you go, I thought all you could have this meat was, was steak was the only form Ooh, this meat came Roast in. beef sandwich would go nice against something. Yeah. Uh, hot roast beef. Oh. I probably could. I don't know. I think like, I'm gonna get I like a regular roast beef. Listen, to but me, listen, but you hold on. Cor- you ate corned beef as a child. The first time I ever when cor- I was I, I, I ate corned beef, I was like 19 or 22 or something. Okay, like when I was 11 years old or so, I can't believe that I see a picture of an 11 year old DeRosa chomping on a corned beef. Yeah, smoking it's a cigarette a, with a coffee. Old man sandwich. Yeah, yeah. In, Ma! The, in a police Ma! in a police station. Give at me my a corned desk. beef. Yeah. Rye. You were we, dabbling with rye as a is, child. But this is what I'm trying to tell you. I didn't know what rye bread was. There was a food court at the King of Prussia Mall, where near where I grew up. That was our mall. They had an amazing food court. They had a deli in there. It was a chain deli at the time. It was called Bain's Deli. I don't think they exist anymore. Bain's Deli had was called the Corned Beef Special, which is a common sandwich you find at Jewish delis and stuff like that. My mom brought me there for the to the mall for the day, and then she we went to the food court, and she goes, "I think you should try this sandwich. I think you'll like it." That is an adult profile, That's right? An adult flavor yeah. profile. She corned ordered, beef. She ordered it for me, and the she goes, what, she, "I go, what's on it?" She goes, "Well, you like beef? It's corned beef. It's different." I go, "Okay, you like coleslaw?" I go, "Uh huh." She goes, "You like Russian dressing?" I go, "Yeah." She goes, "That's mm-hmm. what's on it." She gives it to me. I eat this thing. I was sprung. I was like, "This is so <laughs> I was sprung." Dude, I couldn't get enough I love of it. it. I couldn't get enough of it. Uh, it was like a, almost like McDonald's with me where I would say to my mom, like, can we please go to the mall and go to Bain's Deli wow. and get a corned beef special? And that was it. That I, was the last time, time I had, I had a had sandwich mine. that changed where I was like, well, this is what you can do with a sandwich. Ooh. I think the first I think time I had a, a, cor- a corned beef uh, on rye was like maybe like at St. Paddy's at like an Irish pub, like when I was like in my late teens or early 20s. And I was like, it's okay. Well, no. it's 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 a very distinct taste. Um, I think it's I think it's a learned. I think I think I think you have to acquire the taste for it. I don't. And I don't think agree. that if you have it once, you could time out from it for quite some time. A ham and cheese is an everyday sandwich. A ham and cheese, at the least, is you could have a, a ham and cheese weekly. I you think feel you can have a corned beef on rye weekly. Oh, easily weekly. Really, I could have a couple Just times that, a week. It's so rich and heavy and well, greasy. The only and- reason, the only thing that ever stops me from having a corned beef on rye is if I have stuff to do that day. Obviously, it's not right, a sandwich. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Right. So you eat it, and you. But become, I got to be honest with you, you too. Itis. I got to be honest with you too. A ham and cheese in the middle of the day isn't making me feel great either. You know why? Look, processed lunch meat ham is Fair. one of the worst things you can put in Fair, your body. I think the corn sodium is, is like, off the charts. Yeah. It's so high that I get the low sodium, and I still feel like I'm, I'm going to go into a salt coma. Yeah. Right? And also, too, the brand depends. You've got to get the right band. And there's a lot of Boar's hams. Head. Boar's Head ham. I say Dietz and Watts, but I do enjoy it. Boar's Head is the... I'll the put this on the line right now. When I speak ham and cheese, I'm speaking Boar's Head ham. I like it shredded thin. And when you go on well, the road, when you go outside, I, it's all we sell here on the, in New York. When you go on the road, especially like in the Midwest and stuff, I can't believe it. I thought it was like the number one. It, they don't sell it. It's you like get into weird some dangerous Virginia ham or Black Forest ham. Dude, they slice it thick. You get in some dangerous oh. cold cuts out there yeah. in the middle of America. Yeah, I'm telling you, the two leading it's brands west out there. are Dietz and Watson and Boar's Head. I prefer Dietz and Watson because I grew up with Dietz and Watson. It sounds like a law firm. I know. <laughs> And I'll tell you something. One shit. It oh, sounds like a, a like a. I was going to try to make a lawyer joke. It sounds like a touring like banjo act. Yeah, we need Normand in here for a, yeah. for. A, ah. yeah. He'll be up. 
<laughs> he'll be here soon. We have, yeah, next, he'll be here for the next one. Yeah, I don't know when these are coming out, but Norman's yeah. going to be a guest. Yeah, no, so the deli is kind of like a law firm. The tail lane is you go in there, you're yeah. sued for the booze. Yeah. Yeah. You got a briefcase, kind of looks like the sandwich. Like, oh, yeah. I, got, I got problems. I got problems. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got a lawsuit against me. I need, uh, I need a lawyer. I need, I need, to, I need uh, help. And it's like, what do you say when I, you go I, into I, a law firm? I'm in a pickle. Oh, I got all sorts of problems here. And then the DC wants goes, well, we sell ham. <laughs> no one is here, yeah, by the way. Yeah, I know he's here. That's why I'm doing it. Is he here? I can hear him laughing in the other oh, room. I can hear him laughing in the other room. The, uh, so, all right. So, well, you, he didn't even see the phys- you didn't even see the physicality. We're doing it all. <laughs> Norman, grab yourself a little plastic green cup from behind the bar. We're gonna have a few drinks while you're on with us, buddy. Ah, I love um, him. So. So here's my thing. I understand that the ham and cheese is more of a common sandwich, but you got to you got to be careful about what ham you're getting because somebody makes you a ham and cheese and they put a honey ham on there. Gross. They put a black forest yeah, on there. I'm not, maybe. About, I'm not talking about when someone someone gets someone's order wrong. I'm they put, no, but I'm saying go, some people think that's the ham. Let's go basics. Ham, cheese, white American. Oh, what kind mayo. of ham? What kind of no, no mayo? What are you talking about? I'm talking about mayo. No, I'm talking about just a uh, dude. I go straight up ham. You can't have it dry. White American uh, white bread. Yeah, you can't have it dry. Sure, you can. Nah. Yes, you can. Better help. Better help. I like better help. This podcast is sponsored by Better Help Online Therapy. Relationships take work, folks, and a lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to help other people, to treat other people well. But how often do we give that treatment to ourselves? I've only learned recently uh, for sure that self-care and self-treatment is very important and therapy is important. That's one of the ways I take care of myself. I agree. I agree. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people do it by hitting the gym. Uh, they make time for their haircut. Uh, they try therapy. Uh, and But at the end of the day, no matter what you're doing, you are your greatest asset. So invest the time in yourself, the effort into yourself. Like, you do for other people, okay? Like, that's important. It's and mental I've, gym. People yeah. go to the gym all the time. They exercise. You got to do the same thing for your brain. It's the reason I go to therapy on a regular basis. You just get stuff out. You process stuff. And it's just good health. It's just good mental health. I talked about therapy on this episode. I talked. We talked about it on this episode. Yeah. We believe in it. Do it for yourself. The podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And Taste Bud listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Taste Buds. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Taste buds give a try and see why over two million people have used better help online therapy folks whether it's saving money and spending less uh, getting organized or losing weight or you know just thinking of whatever worthwhile goals that you're trying to set for yourself for this brand new year of 2022 at the top of many people's lists is learning a new language that's, right. and that's where Babbel comes in we love Babbel a language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions these, fit, these lessons take about 15 minutes. It's a perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for lesson plans. That's very impersonal. But Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Uh, the teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. It's I'm a not how, like how you, Yeah, me too. It's not how you used to learn in school. Yeah, they, exactly. they do this, like, it's it's fun learning. Yeah. Uh, 14 different languages, which we always talk about, including all the hits, German, Italian, French, Spanish, <laughs> etc. cetera. Uh, they have a speech recognition technology that also helps you with your pronunciation. So not just learning the context, but the pronunciation. I think that's um, one of the best features, honestly. Uh, well, also, in addition to the lessons, through Babbel, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. So, there's a host of things. It comes with a 20-day 20, uh, 20 money-back guarantee. Start your it. new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you're going to get an additional three months free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use our promo code TASTEBUDS. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code TASTEBUDS. Babbel. Language, language for, for life. life. Corned beef, babe, is a niche sandwich at best. People have it. Uh, if you're not Irish and you don't have high blood pressure and rosacea, you're not having corned beef all the time. You're having corned beef on the holidays. If you go into a, 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 a deli, that, like a Jewish deli or something, that really will slice it up and make it nice. But on the holidays, what the hell are you talking patties, about? I mean, like, you know what I mean? You have it like then. No, you have it any day oh, you, you have, If you go into a pub or a gastro pub or something like that. No, not a pub. I'm talking. I go. You, to, you have corned beef on right go, in, at home? I go to, oh, I'll, I'll do it at home. 
You have corned beef in Brother. Hot? I will buy a corned beef, make it myself in my oven, and then slice it and make corned beef sandwiches with it. a lot. But also, too, I'll go to a Jewish deli. I'll go to Second Avenue Deli. I'll go to um, Sarge's is sure, another I one I Sarge's. like. But, but like, I, like, I don't, like, the corned beef, st- the style of corned beef I eat the least is the... What about the fatty and the, all that? It's just, it's, you know... Brother, it's, it's cor- so good. Corned beef doesn't repeat on you for days? No. It doesn't. You eat a corned beef later that day, you're not just, just be, uh, burping up corned beef. Not at all. Corn. I'm not just saying that. I'm not just saying really? that. Really? No. And what else is on there with the rye? My favorite Cold, approach coleslaw and Russian? is coleslaw, Russian dressing, and then maybe some Swiss cheese. But sometimes the Swiss cheese puts it a little too over the top for me, where I'm like, oh, man, this is a heavy sandwich. Right I'd now. go French dip before I go corned beef on rye. That's mine. crazy. You're nuts. You're nuts. Frank, you want to talk about a boring sandwich. I mean, I like a French dip. I respect boring. your moxie because I think you're going to get shit canned here because I think ham and cheese is going well, to dominate Well, because you have, a, you have a knack for picking... The babe, most babe, mainstream babe, American dishes. Don't even go dishes. there, man. Because we sat down. I said, I said we we were gonna do we were gonna do ham and cheese versus hot dog. Yes, we were gonna do that. We thought they were both a derivative of pork, and we thought well, they, they were, were both like kids kids yeah, on the kids yeah. menu, and we thought they were different enough, but both powerhouses to go up against each other. And I tell you right now, I think you made a mistake because you came in and you said, you know what? I'll do actually a sandwich. I'll do corned beef. I, I love it. You said I can't. Wait to do corned beef. I can't. You got loud with I'm it. I'm excited about it. And now it. you're going to tell me I have a knack for picking very popular well, no, sandwiches? The, look, you, you I did didn't it to say, yourself. I you didn't, blew it. I, I didn't say I didn't think I would win with corned beef. I said I'm ready to do corned beef because I feel that passionately, passionately about it. Corned beef on rye with coleslaw and Russian dressing is my favorite sandwich of all time. So much so, I won't serve it in my own sandwich shop because we don't have rye bread. We do everything on our, the, our home baked rolls, and I won't do I won't do misjustice to it. I won't or injustice to it. I won't do it. It's a sacred sandwich to me. What? Why doesn't somebody invent a rye roll? Did I just blow your mind? Did I just blow everybody's I mind? I think it's probably what really about a hard. Rye hero bread. I think it's probably really hard to do. I don't know anything about rye. Way, because a bunch of the fans wrote in they're anti rye because it's not on the menu here. Oh real come on guys. <laughs> I can't win with these people. Your own people are eating you alive. I can't win with these people. I gotta be honest, uh, corned beef I think you, you do you eat corned beef the way you could eat ham and cheese frequently. You eat you're going straight to the grave, buddy. You're going straight to the grave. That's you, a widow maker. Are you talking corn beef like rye? ham and cheese is some kind of health food corn that be- that's, in a, that's in a vending machine at a gym? Cor- it's it's a terrible food. I don't even yourself. know where corned beef comes from. I don't know where the beef comes from. Where does corned beef come from? The cow. But why is it corned? I've never... It's the seasoning, but I don't know why it's called corned beef. So this is the shavings of a cow? I Brother, say, I got honestly, news for you. Honestly, corned beef so- is, is better for you than ham is. Corn... I don't know. I don't know. Pimp, give us statistics. Give us calories on corned beef versus ham. I guarantee you ham is worse for First you. First of all, it says corned beef is made with beef brisket. It's brisket. All right. That is much better for you than ham. It's, it's, Pimp, give us a calorie count on ham versus corned beef. Ham is cured, dude. There is nothing worse for you than a cured meat. And corned beef is more straight up. Just slice it it's off. It's brisket. The, you know what, though? I look at corned beef sometimes, and it just looks like... They're both around the same calorie. Don't give me a round. Which one is uh, higher? Two thirteen for corned beef and two o three for ham. Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! Give me a sodium count on both. <laughs> I want a sodium count on both. Now, one thing you've overlooked is that uh, ham and cheese goes to school lunch, so it's nostalgic. No, right. I, I know. I'm saying uh, ham and cheese is since I'm a kid. Ham and cheese. Right, it's for a limited palate. And I know it's I for say a this a dumb lot, child guys. that doesn't understand what food is. I don't know. I think that uh, even the most refined palate, I think Chef Gordon Ramsay would love a nice ham and cheese. I think we all would, but you, I think. You I, guys ready for the sodium? Yeah. Uh, 827 milligrams in the corned beef and 1684 in the ham. Holy shit. No. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Double. Oh my god, I didn't think that. Give me fat! Give me fat! <laughs> <laughs> Saturated fat and fat. Give me it. Give me it. You're, you're we're way fatter. Saturated fat is probably out the fucking asshole. That is insane. Uh, ham is eight grams. Corned beef is. One minute. Corned beef, 16 grams. Double the fat! Sodium is going to kill you saturated, before that fat will. Saturated. By the way, oh I got god. news for you. It's good fat because it's animal fat. That's not bad fat. I don't know if that's how it goes, buddy. No, bad fat, is, fat like, is, is like, like oils, avocado, fried, whatever. Olive oil. 
I don't think good fat is then a T is see if corned beef is good. F- good good fats <laughs> says. Is uh, two point five saturated fat, and the corned beef is five grams. Double the saturated and regular fat. But the good fats are unsaturated, right? Oh, all right, <laughs> <laughs> all right. It says that ham. The history of, uh, by the way, corned beef is like a New York City staple. Yes, by the way, it's like Irish, you know. Yes, St. that Patrick's I know. Day. But but if you leave here, it's Jewish. It's more Jewish, Jewish, right? Um, it I says would, Irish. I, no, I, no, I know it's like traditionally an Irish dish, but I feel like in New York, it's the, very much a Jewish. Right yeah, you are the only child in the history of this world that was a that that corned beef changed your life. That you were a young child ordering corned beef on the reg. I think of corned beef even now, and at and, and my age even now, and I feel like people with walkers order corn corned beef. It's a, <laughs> There's it's a, a reason. Holiday, it's a holiday, or what is people. This everybody. Holiday? I, I would like to get a statistical breakdown of 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 what color hair. What is this the holiday? Order, I, I bet you everyone who orders corned beef. I bet you eighty percent of them have pure white hair. All right, all right, and guess what? Everybody that orders ham and cheese has no pubic hair because they're children. <laughs> they're little dumb children. Well, guess what? We are the go, future. Do we you go future. with a straight the face? The corned beef people are do you fucking go with a, on the way Do you out? go with a straight face into a restaurant and order a ham and cheese? I don't. Who, what restaurant serves ham and That's cheese? That's what I'm saying. It's because it's child's food. Ah, come yeah, on, at home. come on. Come on, look, it's a great sandwich, but it's basic bitch shit. That's all I'm saying. It's basic bitch shit for a reason. Popular music is called pop because it's the most popular. It's the reason it's the most popular. It's the most appealing. There's a reason it's the most appealing. It's the most amenable. I will say this in closing arguments. I will say this in closing arguments. You put a tray down, and on that tray is a corned beef with coleslaw and Russian dressing, a side of potato salad, and a dill pickle He's half. Bringing in sides. You're not... <laughs> You're I'm not. Sorry. There's. He needs there is, two friends, dude. That Corn is a. Beef needs two friends. That is a lunch. That is a dinner. Corned beef makes its way into breakfast with corned beef hash. All right. This is a meal sandwich. A ham and cheese is at best a passive lunch or a snack. It's, That's uh, it. You think it's at best a passive lunch or a snack? Yes. Well, I got to tell you, don't underestimate snacks. Don't. All right. Yeah. Fine. Fine. All right, you guys want to hear some tweets? You want to go right yeah, to the Yeah, no, poll? you can read us a couple real quick. Okay, here's one. Uh, corned beef reminds me of how my grandmother looks and smells. My grandmother's... <laughs> Thank you! She also, Thank you! She also writes, my grandmother's deceased. <laughs> corned beef All also right, reminds me... Out of beef the gate, that rem- might be the winner. Corned beef also reminds me a little bit of, like, mold flesh or a very bad uh, female... I said and it. Ham, oh my God. And ham doesn't. <laughs> that I mean, bright that, pink ham. No, it just reminds you of like a, like a really that's nice. Sweaty. A, a, that's the other thing with ham. It's so a, sweaty. It reminds you of a, a beautiful It's such pig. a wet meat. It's kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wet meat. Go ahead. Somebody wrote, if if Joe sided, sided with corned beef, I'm never going to Joey Rose's. God. All right, I'm let's hear him. pummeled. Um, corned beef on rye is not a lunchable flavor. Well, that's a great point. Do you ever have a Lunchable? I mean, you're not even eating food. You know what I'm saying? Anything that could be mimicked in the way that Lunchables mimic food is, is but, you know, but, come on. But, what are but, we talking but, but, about are you here? Are you seeing that as a plus or a minus? Some a people minus. See it as a plus. I'm saying, I'm saying you, corned beef is a quality meat. Like, ham is a, pro, for the most part, is a very mimicable process kind of experience. Norman, choose one. <laughs> here, Norman, you can come on here. Uh, choose, choose one. Hot Classic beef. ham and cheese sandwich or a corned beef? What are you choosing? Ooh. You're not going to like it, but I'm going corned beef. Oh! Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I well, could have never, and... never guessed that one. <laughs> <laughs> I never would have guessed it either. Ham and cheese, that's like special needs kids. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. The new Victoria's Secret Let Mark, Mark yeah, corned beef is like an uh, incontinent. Mark, no, wait, 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 wait. Let Mark read, a tw- let Mark read some of the tweets. That'll be funny. Here, here, here. Yeah. Tweets. Ready? Hey, how are you, pimpy? <laughs> All right. Ham and cheese, I can make it home any day. Corned beef is more of a treat. There you go. Okay. Mm. All, right. all right. All right. Nobody with taste buds is picking a grilled cheese over a corned beef on rye. Grilled cheese? Mm. Uh, all right. Corned beef with mustard is like a Ferrari. Ham and cheese is a Ford Topaz. No contest. <laughs> wow. One more, pimp. All right. I loved ham and cheese as a kid. And it's just as good today, especially if you toast it. Oh! Right. Pip, let's give the winner to the first tweet. Mark, you can read the first tweet. 
Dead All pimp right. Pick. Corned beef reminds me of how my grandmother looks and smells. My grandmother is deceased. All right. Who's the handle so we can tell them to follow? It's Claire Mutton or Mutton. M- Mutton? M- Thanks M- for Mutton. M U T T O N? M O U T O N. Mountain, Mouton. All right. Follow Claire. <laughs> and Pimp, who is our that? winner? Humble Pie. Let's get that drum rolling here, Pimpy. Right. Oh, um, which one are you voting, Pimp? Oh, boy. Ham and cheese and corned beef, 9,390 votes. Okay. okay. Wow. Oh, ham and cheese wins in a landslide with oh, 70%. 70? Holy oh, hell. Oh, my God, baby. Yep. Oh, my God. Put a nail in the coffin that is corned beef. Bury it with all the old I'm people. I'm off to a bad start this year. Yeah. You're up now like you're up now like five to two. Listen to me. You could have played hot dogs versus ham and cheese. Get that you finger out changed, of my face. You changed it the last minute. It, it was ham and cheese versus hot dogs, and we'll no, never know. We're doing, we'll never know. We're doing hot it's dogs like because, we're doing, the world will never because know. we're doing hot dogs versus chicken fingers soon. Okay. And we decided that was a better battle. Okay. All right, that's coming up. Our next episode, stay tuned. Mark Norman will be with us next week to battle. We're not going to tell you just yet. But thanks, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, uh, May 14th, the Beacon Theater. Tickets are on sale right now. March 11th uh, is the Ryman. Tickets on sale right now. March 12th to Chattanooga. God bless. SavileCounterComedy.com. Uh, this comes out, what, next week? I will be in Philadelphia at the Punchline March for in March for five shows. And then down to South by Southwest, I'm doing a sandwich panel down there and some stand-up. Please come see them. Uh, and then in April, I'm out west at the Irvine Improv and then down to San Diego to do some shows. Get all your tickets at JoeDeRosaInfo.com. I can just say one thing. Speaking of San Diego, go in LA you need to up your game I'm there May 21st and 22nd and I want to see a little more activity in sales please thank you so much thank you and also come to Joey Rose's we're here right now we're open Tuesday through Sunday go to joeyrosesnyc.com for all your info I still love you babe I love you too taste buds they come into the mic talking about the food they hate talking about the food they like two fools gonna fight but only one food can be right taste buds man you